I subbed for uh, 20 years. I've been in Galea for nine years, and uh, this is my second year. They tried to consolidate me last year, and now they're doing the same thing again this year. And I'm, I'm not the right uh, sex for the job. So there's no seniority. You don't have any. Seniority? I have seniority, but they're playing a. Uh, they need a female for my job. How are they doing that? Uh, I teach PE. They're saying they need a female for locker room supervision. And uh, the funny thing is, uh, she only supervises the locker room maybe one fifth of the time, at most, and then she has a prep period. So she doesn't supervise the locker room. It's just a ploy to get rid of people that the administration doesn't agree with and who speak up to the administration. So you think it's political? Oh, I, I know it's political. They, they eliminated uh, our librarian because who's been in the district 20-something years. Don't tell me a high school of over 2,000 people doesn't need a full-time librarian. So it's they seem to have money for other programs. Common Core or uh, STEM, STEM or something like uh, that. They play smoke and mirrors with the budget. Uh, they, they hide money and then all of a sudden money appears. And uh, uh, after I'm gone, the money will appear for somebody to take my job that uh, the principal pulls in that he knows from his former school. Are you saying there's cronyism in the school district? Oh, most definitely. <laughs> it's who, a lot of it is who you know. Yeah. So the board members here, what are you asking them to do? There's uh, money. There's no need to lay off people, and there's no need to lay off people in physical education. That's my job when there's uh, so obesity and uh, diabetes ed epidemic. They're cutting PE. They're giving credit for uh, being a manager on a sports team. You get PE credit. You get PE credit for being an ROTC when you're only uh, doing physical activity one day a week. With an, uh, un, un, uh, a teacher who's uncredentialed. It's just it's a way to cut money. And what are they going to use the money for? I don't know what they're using the money for. They're just cutting the money. They're cutting programs so they can save money. Uh, I'm just a Galileo teacher, high school teacher, here to support you know the staff. And I just find that the whole process is so crazy disruptive. And it's just to, to play all these games and like with all the money shuffling around and just to do it up on the backs of teachers is just wrong. It's just immoral and especially in the light of all of like the monies that are coming up. It's like they play these games every year there's any kind of small money issue. They wind up firing teachers, they wind up having people like destroy their like, you know, their whole kind of the fluidity of like their jobs. A lot of people wind up leaving the district because of it. People wind up having whole summers without, you know, health insurance and it's just it's, I think it's one of the most destructive things you can do to the students. If you're making cuts, like once you start to mess with the teachers, that's the most direct contact with the students, more than any other position. And it's just, I just feel it's just immoral to like kind of do that. And you know, with all the money, that's what kind of what the state's flush with right now. And you know, and especially in like with all of these combination of consolidations that schools are having to do, and all the layoffs that are in there to like be pushing in all these big programs and pushing in millions of dollars of things like a STEM initiative which you know these initiatives are great but it's like you don't do things like that when you're making cuts at the same time. And what about this librarian issue? So we, I, I mean that's just a shame to have you know we're gonna be a giant comprehensive high school and to not have a full librarian to me is just a shame. You know it's, it's and, well literacy is one of the biggest things they talk about with the schools and to like to say we're not like you know that's don't have a full-time librarian that's just going straight directly against that. So you can't say you know, want literacy in one hand and then fire like with the other. Stop the layoffs now! Stop the layoffs now! So I'm here to support um, better schools because I believe in better schools. It's our hope for uh, democracy, our hope for the future is to have good schools. So. Uh, not just for the rich, but uh, for everybody. I grew up going to school with people of all classes, and that has changed in America, and I think it's changing America. It's not making us a better nation to be so divided. And, uh, uh, and I'm here because I want my kids and my grandkids to have good schools.
because there will be less help inside the classroom. And, and are you affected? Are you a paraprofessional? I am a paraprofessional, yes. Are you yes. affected with the layoff? Yes, I do because I'm going to be laid off after, I think, it's 20 years. And what is that going to be to the students in the school if they're affected? It's going to be... Uh, it's going to be worse for them, I mean, because they won't have the help that they needed. I mean, and, and, and that's, that's the thing, I mean, right now, that students need a lot of help inside the classroom, especially in reading, math, science, I mean, you name it. And why are they doing this? There's more money coming, I mean, why are they... Uh... We don't know yet, we are trying to uh, find out, I mean, and we are trying, as you can see, to stop this laid off, I mean, because they have extra money, but they just don't want to use it inside the classroom. What are they using? it for? I really don't know. I can tell. <laughs> so uh, what do the parents and the, the students' family feel about this cutback? The How children? do they feel? Yeah. Uh, well, I guess I mean uh, they feel a little frustrated, I mean, because uh, their children are not getting the help that they deserve. Are, are these mostly minority, working class, uh, black, Latino, or what kind of students? Are the you, rich schools? Or? You can say that. I mean, minorities and Latinos. Yeah, yeah. So they're being impacted more than... The they are being impacted. There you go. Yeah, that's the word. Yes. I work for county and court schools. To buy back the furlough day. Most of them make about $26,000. So for the district to have $50 million and can't rescind paraprofessional layoffs is unconscionable.
nothing, nobody is just, you know, saying anything. There's just lack of attention, you know, we're repeating our voices of concerns and nothing. There's been underrepresentation in our community and many other issues, and none of you, we've been here talking about, you know, help us. Help us. Superintendent Carranza, help us. Hydra Mendoza, help us. What, what's, what's wrong with you guys? Yeah. Hi, um, my name is May, and I have a um, kid who's been in Bessie Carmichael since um, kinder. And this is actually my first time, because um, I'm the type of person who would not say anything, just keep quiet. But this time, it's, it's, I would like to, um, here, it's actually a petition against Ka um, Karen Francois, the um, current um, assistant principal of the I, I'd like to ask you not to refer to district employees by name. Okay. Okay, thank you. Once again, this is my first time, so I have no idea. Okay, sorry, I apologize. Okay, so our assistant principal is very rude, arrogant, mean, and disrespectful. Um, I have different emails here. Um, the most concerning is um, when half of the students got C, D, and F on PE, was created by the um, the substitute teacher. You know, I mean, I approached her, you know, set up a meeting to talk to her about it, but she was rude. She said she has nothing to say. She was literally pointing fingers at me, okay? And um, a lot of parents can attest that. She was rude to my daughter. My daughter has been in that school and been a 4.0 student. So for her not listening to, to me and the rest of the parents is unacceptable. I even have to ask um, Charm, I'm sure I can say her name right, she's here. So I ask her for help because either the principal or assistant principal is not listening. And then um, she always, the, on April 24, I had an appointment with her and literally she was typing, not looking at me and saying I have nothing to say. Mm -hmm. And then um, I also emailed um, the principal, the assistant principal, and I have all the copies of the email here saying how I felt they didn't apologize. Nothing. Zero. Um, what else? Um, you know, um, she's rude to the teachers too. Um, I'm sure I can say Miss Medell. I mean, she was rude to the teacher, Miss Medell, who gave up her lunch break just to teach my daughter and the rest of the kids, you know, math. Um, I think they owe it to Miss Medell because she's such a great teacher, but she yelled at Miss Medell in front of the students. My daughter can witness that. She heard it. Um, and the thing I'm surprised is last year, because um, I was so mad, I had to call Office of the Voice and complain. And I, I just checked my rights as a parent, you know, to complain against the assistant principal. And shockingly, I was so shocked that our girl in elementary school find a petition against her last year as a principal and have everything here. Everything, I mean, same concern, rude, disrespectful. And another email from the parent of Bessie Carmichael, who had a weapon, what is it, um, weapon incident at Bessie Carmichael campus last, you know, this December. Um, she was very rude, she said she has nothing to say, and literally hang up on the mom saying, I have nothing to say. She called the cop, filed a police report, I have the police report as well. It's right here somewhere. I can show it to you. Um, and she, the police officer got the same treatment. She was so rude. So my concern is if she does if she does this to the parents, I wonder how, how she deals with the students. I'm really bothered and concerned. So we want her out from my school. And I have a petition here. Sorry, I'm shaking because I'm so mad. I'm going to file a petition to remove her out from her school if I literally have to take a day or two to take a time off from work and have all the parents sign this, I will do that. So I'm, I'm hoping you, you know, I'm sure you guys have kids and I know you guys understand where I'm coming from. It's just really disrespectful. She's so rude. Um, I feel bad for the pretty students, literally. I mean, my daughter is graduating this year. I have nothing to lose. I mean, she got accepted to a nice school. 
my son to is going to be an incoming middle school, and I wanted to go to Bessie Carmichael because honestly, Bessie Carmichael is a good school, best teachers, community. I owe it to that school. That's why my daughter is a 4.0 student all the time. I owe it to that school. But I'm bothered. If she's our assistant principal, I mean, I don't know. I mean, is my son safe in that school knowing that she doesn't care? Again, I challenge you to report all the reports that I have here. And take a look. Please, take a look. Thank you. Please take a look. Thank you. Uh, following up on that same topic, uh, my name is Alex Schwarzman. My stepdaughter is a uh, uh, eighth grader at Bessie Carmichael as well. On the same topic regarding the assistant principal, for uh, several weeks, my stepdaughter was telling us that the PE teachers were telling them, random PE teachers, because they were constantly changing, that they were going to be getting terrible grades for the quarter. And I would ask her why this would be. And she said she, she didn't know. They weren't assigning any work. They were just walking around not doing anything. She got, excuse me, she got her report card. She got a, a D. She's a straight-A student, 4.0. She just got into the lower. And I went to the school the next day to find out what the story was. The assistant principal wasn't there, but the PE teacher was. So I spoke with him and I asked him, I said, what's the methodology that you used to figure out this grade? And he said, there is no methodology. I said, so where did this grade come from? He said, well, it's what I felt at the end of the period. I was like, what do you mean it's what you felt? And he said, well, I don't have a methodology. I'm only here a few weeks, but they just brought me in. I'm a substitute. And I said, well, how does that work exactly? He said, that's what it is. So I asked to speak to the assistant principal. She wasn't there. Um, Miss, uh, okay, another staffer told me to come back the next day, so I did. I came back, I walked in, she was there. I said, I'd like to speak to you about the grades. She said, there's nothing to talk about, you need to leave. And Amber was there with me. And I said, but wait, you told Amber that we can work on this grade. And she said, no I didn't, Amber, you need to get out. She kicked her out, and then she told me that I was being hostile, and that I had to leave. It's like, and that's pretty much where it ended. So, I, you know, realistically, that doesn't work. It's not conducive to the kids. It doesn't help them uh, learn anything. It certainly doesn't teach them how to communicate with one another. And it doesn't make them feel like the staff there is very supportive. Mm, yes. Amber's doing fine. She's going to Lowell. This won't even be a blip on her record. But for the rest of the kids, it's really not going to work. A really long time since preschool. So, throughout the years, I really liked it, except for this year. This year was like a really big change, especially because of Ms. Francois. She seriously turned our school into a mess. No one really likes her. She's rude to everybody, even the students and the teachers. She pulls out students. She pulls out teachers and she yells at them. She yells at us and she yells at everybody. So, nobody really feels safe at school anymore, and we just really want her to leave the school, because even though I'm graduating this year, I'm scared for the other students, like what will happen to them if she continues to be there, so, yes. <coughs> things just need to change into a better place. Program, it wouldn't make sense to fire our only Filipino teacher. Yes. And yeah, I just don't really like our new assistant principal because she's not only rude to the teachers, but she's also rude to the students, and I don't even feel safe going to school. So yeah. I'm Betsy Carmichael. I'm here to explain about our assistant principal. Uh, so every time I try to like complain or ask her about something, she'll be rude and not say anything. She won't even listen to my side of the story. And when um, my stepdad came to complain about my PE grade, um, afterwards she came up to me and she yelled at me, uh, telling me that it was rude for him to come up to her. And um, I just don't like her. And I just hope or like she said, she didn't yeah. Keeping our families engaged in our schools in support of our students. The 11 who are here, the nutritionists, make sure that our students and our families have access to healthy food and a foundation for good education. 
and our 16 classroom aides do the great work of assisting in our classrooms across the school district. We should be hiring more parents, yeah, not yeah. threatening dozens of white yeah. houses, period. <clears throat> Two weeks ago, I went to an incredible event celebrating and encouraging African American educators. It was the first such event I've ever seen put on by this district. Now you're set to lay off many veteran African American pairs, some with over 20 years of experience in the district. The same educators who work every day to make sure our African American students get the services they deserve. Don't you see how bad that looks to celebrate our work one week in front of the public and then quietly show us the door the very next week. I urge you to do the right thing as you send the layoff. You have the resources, now you need the guts. Now you're going to hear from some of the parents who are being laid off. So please look them in the eye and listen to their story. My name is Julia Yarbrough, and I'm a parent of a daughter that's about to start high school here in the Unified School District. And I also work in outreach in the Bayview the community group called ACE, Alive Californians for Community Empowerment. And I also am trying to close the achievement gap. In order to do that, we need all the things that you're laying out, the paralegals, the teachers, the social workers. And uh, I want to say that we want to keep them. We know you got the money. And to me, it seems like you're, you are targeting our neighborhoods the low-income neighborhoods, Bayview, Hunters Point, Betrayal Hill, Visitation Valley. And I just need to say, you need to stop the layoffs. I want to acknowledge Going Bata and the SOA community. Um, I'm hoping that you'll restore funding for all youth programs in District 6. That would be um, United Players, Oasis, Song Ken Youth, and Going Bata. I've been a parent um, for, for many years of, um, with uh, two children that have been involved in Gali Bata, and I'm also a teacher. But tonight, I'm here for that, and I'm also here for Ms. Medell. Um, I'm here because of Ms. Medell's dedication. And I would rather just be at home, like many people here, and just putting my feet up. It's been a long day. I've been teaching all day, but I know that it's really important to speak on uh, Ms. Mandel's half. She taught my son pre-algebra and algebra, and those were not easy classes for him. This non-continuity in the classroom in room 102 at Alamo, and I think that it's a hot topic for me because there are tons of teachers in this community that want to be there, and we clearly have a teacher that does not want to be. And as I was reading on all of your websites this week on your issues and your hot topics, I noticed that this collaborative effort between, teacher, between teachers and parents is paramount and sets the tone for success of children throughout their educational experience. I think nobody says that better than yourself, Superintendent, when you talk about your experience with your kindergarten teacher. I just want to first up and say um, on behalf of those who have been affected with this situation, I guess I'm going to be very specific just to give some thoughts to this board. And uh, tonight I've heard the PAC spoken. Apparently it's, it's amazing that it was stated tonight that half of you folks serve on the PAC which stands for families. And I'm looking at everyone I mean, It's amazing before Richard has, before he became a superintendent, I met with him personally, Commissioner Field, <laughs> trying to advocate for an equal, opportunity for all minorities. And you know the data. I was in the school site council and talking about the data. Uh, just for everyone that is here tonight, uh, my people, the Samoan Pacific Islander, are the lowest. Lowest in terms of achievement. Now, you advocated so long, <coughs> Commissioner Fuhrer, and talked with you, Mr. Garanza. I was specifically hired because of that situation, the need of a bilingual. Some of our other colleagues can talk about that reclassification, but I was hired because of that. 
And with your market surveys, how can you consider to lay off the last Mohegan of this tribe? <laughs> <laughs> I met with the assistants of the HR that came over and talked with us and talked about data and facts about justice. We were told to serve the justice for all students. Yes. And gives me a question. What do you weigh in terms of seniority versus the need of the students? You can have someone that has been 20 years of service, but if the need of the hour is in a small community, not in the lowest achievement cap, what do you weigh on that? You want to keep the, the 20 year service that got nothing to do with that, that need? Or are you going to keep, the, you're going to keep that particular person that can reach that, that problem, that issue that we need to meet? That's the achievement cap you're trying to improve. Right? You can't improve it by killing the chicken that lays the golden egg. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to bring it to your consideration. Consider the need of the district, which is for all students to improve. Yes. Some of the African American students in my particular, I'm very, very proud of my success in my school because I reached the minorities that could not be reached. Yes. Here in the district, this year, I've gained more African American parents than any other, I believe, any other school. <laughs> you know, a long time ago, my, my father passed away as a principal and 40 years of service. I have three brothers that are retired as, as educators. I hated, I was the youngest of the family. Uh, and I said, I would never be an educator. Why would my family, why would my dad want to stay in this business? So stressful. You know, I've seen it. I've seen it in the, in the school. Now I come to find out why. Because my people need help. That's why my family stayed as educated. Yes. They dying. If you want to contribute to that, then you keep what you sent me on the mail or send me something positive to reach to that community. I leave it to your decision to make that. Rochelle, I am the first president of the parent, excuse, excuse me, I'm so nervous, PTSA of Visitation Valley. I am proud to say that we are here in record numbers and we have been gathering together for a lot of firsts at Visitation Valley thanks to our parent liaison and our new principal, I must say, we've been working well together. And like Moa said, he's needed. And not only to reach Samoan students, but what is to bridge the gap between the faculty and the student, but the parents. The parents are what's missing from the equation. So, parent liaisons are needed. Parent support, or support for the students are needed. Don't lay it all on the teachers to do all the work without support. Parents are support, the liaisons are the support, the um, parents are definitely needed in the classroom. But in particular, Moa has empowered us. He has shown us how to be empowered, how to make a presence at our school and, and be present for not just our personal student, but for all students. We are in those hallways. Criteria that you use to not let me take the test. I request the test three times, and I guess because you don't want to spend money. Well, you the one who is who stated the test. You were the one. We were giving you free services. We were giving you free services. Mr. Uh, Tourist, the other day told me that the um, 2009, when you started the the putting the, the translation requirement on the schools, you spent sixteen thousand dollars. So if you make the counts, you just making rules to spend more money and more money, and also it's unfair that I get at the bottom of the uh, seniority because. Um, there is some individuals who have the same, same description, but they speak Spanish, they were hired within the last three years, maybe last year. That's unfair. Also, I'm going to let uh, my parents to 
talk about it because they have different issues that the schools need, like Sarah needs to have a bilingual who speaks Spanish, 80% of the parents speak Spanish, speak Spanish. And also Puerto needs uh, to have the validation because Puerto is doing good and when you take that support from them, then you make them fail. My name is Saida Hafiz. I am a site nutrition coordinator with Paul Revere and Longfellow. And I'm here to represent uh, the paraprofessional para position R34. I teach nutrition and wellness to kids and adults and also staff wellness. We've been funded for about 12 years, and we're about to have a hiccup in that funding. And the part that um, warms my heart the most is that when, I, when a parent comes to me and says, how did you get my kid to eat broccoli? <laughs> and that he is asking for more. And I say I involve him in the cutting of the broccoli so that he is actually touching it and being a part of it and making dinner. Our funding has a hiccup. And we are asking for this year um, to help continue this funding because I've read, I believe, with Superintendent Carranza that when your workout and your diet and food um, regimen has a hiccup, it is hard to get back into it. I work with 11 wonderful people who do this as a labor of love. Yeah. And with the changes in the food services and IDO and that funding, that's being supported there, the education with how to prepare fresh fruits and vegetables for our children so they can prepare them for themselves is extremely important. I've had a blast this last 12 years. Rebecca Hensler, I'm the seventh grade counselor at James Denman Middle School. Woo. It is hard to believe I am here again to tell you why our counselors need, our students need their school counselors. If you ask our students, they may simply say, Counselors help us with our problems. What they don't know is that research shows that the difference between a student whose life is destroyed by trauma and one who survives and even thrives can be as simple as one consistent positive relationship with an adult. And when a counselor is not laid off, often he or she can be that adult. Counselors know their students. They can tell you who a student is beefing with and who they're going with. Counselors know students' grandpas and aunties. They counsel their siblings and cousins. We don't just know their test scores, we know their passions. But it's not just the kids we know. The screeners at Child Protective Services know us by name. So do the probation officers at YGC. We know recruiters at Summerbridge and College Track. We know the requirements for AVID, for Lowell, and for UC Berkeley. On the computer, we can use SIS, Scheduler, SEIS, Data Director, School Loop, A2A, online referrals, the surveillance cameras, and we're ready to switch to Synergy in August. <laughs> we have expertise. Is the expertise our students lose when you lay off 10 counselors? Counselors cannot be replaced by LSPs, by interns, by after school staff, by outside caseworkers, by advisory teachers, or by an extra AP. One more time rescind the counselor layoffs. For the equal part, um, I would like to say thank you for my short um, my short time at Paul Revere. Um, my mom happened to be the first PTA president of California. Ooh, yes. yes. African American PTA president. Not only that, but growing up in a household where she was the PTA president, I had to have a 4.0. I passed that <laughs> to our students. I help them realize their potential as students, advocate for themselves with, with teachers and staff, help parents understand their children as well as the teachers, empower students of color about their own heritage, as well as provide a positive role model. I empower, I empower them, educate them, as well as help them think school is cool. As a result, I've been added to be a mentor check-in I, my students' grades have risen from the short time I was there. 
from a 1.4 within three months to a 2.14. They realize that they can stay out of the streets, get better grades, get better grades, not be in jail, graduate, and now two of my students have gotten jobs. They also have shown social maturity, better cognitive reasoning, as well as had a listening ear. We are UCFP. Not only that, but by firing and laying off parents of color and more, you are directly affecting the students, the parents, the teachers, and you're disturbing our community. Yeah, Steve Zeltzer, United Public Workers for Action. Uh, I've come to other meetings and about the issue of harassment and bullying of the teachers and the students. And apparently this board, this rubber stamp board, really is not concerned about it because I hear the same stories again and again by other parents and teachers here. The fact of the matter is there was a press conference yesterday with the uh, superintendent about corruption, crime in the district. And he said that the district attorney was going to be investigating that. But there's also an investigation by the district attorney about Martin Luther King's school, the principal and the assistant principal, for bullying and physically abusing a student there and covering it up, obstructing justice. And that, that assistant principal has been transferred to the Common Core. Instead of being released and put on paid leave, he's put on the Common Core. I think there's a criminal cover-up going on by this district. And actually, it's interesting, Los Angeles is not laying off teachers. Other, and this is a richer city. This is a wealthy city. And we're laying off teachers here and counselors and paraprofessionals. Well, who do you represent? Who do you represent? The reality is, your money, the $8 million is going to the Common Core, which is pushed by Pearson and these companies that make money profiting from testing. That's what you're about. You're about pushing commercialization and commodification of education. You're not about protecting the teachers and the students here. The same story over and over again. And the rubber board that you have really has to be replaced. It's time that there be a recall to get some people that really represent the community. And it's a racist attack. It's the poor, black, Latino, working class, Filipino community that's being attacked here in San Francisco. It's not Pacific Heights. It's not the rich communities in San Francisco. So it's time for really action by the community, by labor against this board. It's union busting. You have a corporate control board. People ask, what's happening? Why aren't you standing up for the students, the poor, the black, the working class students here? And that is, the reason you don't stand up, you have another agenda. You have a corporate agenda. That's what's driving you. Thank you. Not only that, but in a few moments, you're going to vote to raise the developer's fees throughout San Francisco. You're going to charge 67 cents per square foot on every residential piece of property that goes up in San Francisco. So you got money. You have absolutely got money. We heard the superintendent tell us tonight that, well, these are all promises. We don't know exactly yet. Except for that $50 million you already got in your pocket. We've had board members tell us, we're not out of the woods yet. I told people outside that that's exactly what you're going to say. You're going to say to us, let's wait until we get the May revised, and then we'll know about money. And then you're going to say, let's wait until we go talk to school services on Friday, then we'll know about the money. And then you're going to say to us, let's wait until we actually get the budget signed, then we'll know about money. And what is the human effect of that waiting? The human effect of that waiting is you are leaving people suspended who don't know about their futures when you don't have to do it because you've got the money in your pocket now. You've got $50 million in your pocket now. And I'm not talking about next year. You can rescind these layoffs now. You could end the furlough days now if you wanted to do it. By not doing it, what do you do? You save a little money that kicks over to the next year. My name is Saida Hafiz. I am a site nutrition coordinator with Paul Revere and Longfellow. And I'm here to represent uh, the paraprofessional para position R34. I teach nutrition and wellness to kids and adults and also staff wellness. We've been funded for about 12 years and we're about to have a hiccup in that funding. 
And the part that um, warms my heart the most is that when, I, when a parent comes to me and says, how did you get my kid to eat broccoli? <laughs> and that he is asking for more. And I say I involve him in the cutting of the broccoli so that he is actually touching it and being a part of it and making dinner. Our funding has a hiccup and we are asking for this year um, to help continue this funding because I read, I believe, with Superintendent Carranza that when your workout and your diet and food um, regimen has a hiccup, it is hard to get back into it. I work with 11 wonderful people who do this as a labor of love and with the changes in the food services and IDO and that funding, that's being supported there, the education with how to prepare fresh fruits and vegetables for our children so they can prepare them for themselves. Stop the